everyone. Welcome to our uh, interview today. My name is Suva Ross, and I am Director of Admissions for Tulane University School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. And today we are going to highlight the Career Services Studio. I would like to introduce our guests, Katherine Gergen and Abby Lukens. Ladies, would you like to say hello? Yeah, thanks so much, Sue, and thanks for joining us on Facebook Live and on Instagram. Um, I'm Katherine Gergen. I'm the Assistant Director of Career Services here at the School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. I've been at Tulane for about three and a half years, and I work with our students on the undergraduate and graduate levels, um, with our alumni who graduate from here, and with employers to connect with them to come to campus, um, connect with our students, and, and really make meaningful relationships. So thanks for being here. Hi everyone, my name is Abby Lukens. I serve as the career advisor here within the School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. So I work with graduate students within the school, uh, undergraduate public health majors, and then recent alumni to guide them in their internship or job search and professional development. Um, and then I also work with Catherine here to build our employer relations and then to bring employers to campus for events and doing some career uh, instructional workshops. Thanks for having us. Thank you for joining us. It's great to hear that not just on-campus students but alumni have access to the Career Services yes. Studio. Well, Catherine, let's start by you telling us about the different services offered here. Yeah, absolutely. So the first one I'd like to mention is the space we're in right now. This is our career studio. Um, it's within the Tidewater building in downtown New Orleans. Um, this space is open to students whenever the building is open uh, for studying, coming to relax, grabbing a free cup of coffee, or meeting with Abby and I for walk-in advising. So that's the main service we offer to students. It's individual career advising on any career or professional development topic that you want to talk about, we're happy to meet with you. Um, we also host and um, promote workshops happening around campus and in the community. So these workshops could be um, instructional workshops on resumes and cover letters or interviewing, networking, um, or they could also be bringing employers or alumni on campus to talk about opportunities for students and alumni to engage in professional development um, post-graduation. The third way that we really connect with students and alumni is through our one weekly email. So we try not to spam your email with too many things, but to consolidate it all into one packed email of the opportunities that are happening for that week coming ahead. Sounds very comprehensive. Yes. <laughs> well, Abby, our students are usually here for about a year and a half mm -hmm. to two years. At what point should they contact a career services? Good question. Um, so students should definitely see us at some point during their first semester and then sporadically throughout their time here. So for most students, the first time that we get to meet them is at an open house or during a tour of campus um, or even at new student orientation. But once you get here for first day of classes, we do uh, recommend that students take a couple to a few weeks to settle in, um, get the ins and outs of campus, uh, but then come in and say hi to us, introduce yourself and familiarize yourself with the studio space. Um, so that'll be the first conversation and that can be something broad, right? Like if um, you want to see what kind of jobs are available after you graduate or just to see what industry feels right to you and then typically we'll meet with students again once they start to seriously think about their practicum search. We can help them uh, identify organizations and uh, maximize their network of peers and alumni. Um, and we'll do the same thing for that job search. But short answer, Sue, is that students can come see us throughout their two years here. Um, any question, big or small, they can come in. Uh, we operate on a walk-in advising model, so at your convenience, you can come in and talk to Catherine or I. Well, Abby, you mentioned uh, walk-in yes. advising. Are appointments ever scheduled? So they are sometimes. It's definitely not a requirement that you schedule an appointment with us. Um, but if you feel that you will need you know, a full hour to talk about your career concerns, 
we'd be happy to schedule an appointment with you and get that on our calendar. But for example, for the fall semester, our walk-in advising hours are Tuesdays through Fridays, 10 to four. So students can just come into the studio and sign in for a drop-in appointment with us. Okay. Well, you handle many events and there are also workshops. Let's discuss those. Yeah, so we, we really enjoy and pride ourselves on um, packing a full calendar during the semesters of events happening on campus in the community um, that we're hosting ourselves or maybe collaborating with other offices on campus. So for example, last Friday, Abby and I worked the Tulane University career fair uh, that brought 50 employers um, on campus to recruit students from all majors and all schools at the university. Um, this week is fall break, so it's a little quieter, uh, but next week, for example, we will have a webinar with the Council of State and Territorial Epidemiologist Fellowship. We will host an interview workshop that will go over um, skills for interviewing as well as practicing some of your techniques. Um, we will host a breakfast and business cards networking event uh, with the Alumni Career Services. Um, and we'll also participate on a resume workshop for international job searches. So we keep ourselves very busy and we like to have a wide array of opportunities for workshops and events. I like the breakfast and business too. Me too. Too. <laughs> Me too. Well, a part of every master's student curriculum includes a practical experience. Can you discuss the practicum and what that is and how are you instrumental in helping students locate the practicum? I can answer that. Um, so the practical experience, we, we call it for short the practicum. Um, as Sue mentioned, this is a practical applied experience outside of Tulane in a work setting. So this should uh, coincide with your classroom experience to create a more robust understanding of the industry. Um, so while each department may have, you know, a little bit different specifications for what is required for the practicum, in general, what that looks like, about 200 to 300 hours of uh, work experience within your last year of school. Um, practicums can be completed over a summer or they can be completed locally throughout the school year. So just to give you a few examples, um, we've had students work nationwide. Uh, we've had students at the Ebola Survivor Corps um, in Sierra Leone. We've had students work at the Uganda Village Project or doing sponsored research in Peru. Um, we've had students doing health policy work in DC, epidemiology work at MD Anderson Cancer Research Center. And then we have several local practicums as well. So um, just a couple, New Orleans uh, Office of Emergency Preparedness and Response. And then we have a student, I think this is really cool, currently working on nutrition and recording recipes for the Isle de Jean Village here in Louisiana. They are being forced to relocate due to coastal erosion and crisis. So she has been working with them. Um, but to answer the second part of your question, in terms of how we assist with students uh, finding practicums, we typically will first encourage students to reach out to their faculty advisor to see if they have any connections or opportunities that they know about to um, find that experience. But then we will talk to students and help them uh, research some organizations based on their career interest and preferred location. And then we'll also help them to build that network work on their resumes and cover letters, make sure those look good, and practice some interviewing as well. Um, so we are available for students throughout that entire practicum experience. I very much like hearing that your practical experience could be overseas, mm -hmm. anywhere domestically, or even locally. Yeah. Is that at the student's discretion? Yes, um, so you know it can be a global experience if students are prioritizing having an international practicum. Um, I have the statistics here. I think over the last just couple years, we've had students do practicums over 45 countries and 28 states. So again, nationwide. Um, as students approach graduation, their interest shifts to careers, employment, and uh, salaries. So 
What do you have to talk about that? Yeah, I'll take that. So that's a really um, important question that we get pretty often in our office. And I would encourage any students who are considering graduate programs to be asking the career offices mm -hmm. this question exactly. So within Tulane School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine, 98% of our graduates are in their first job or in further education uh, within one year of graduation. Um, so this could be anything from going to serve in the Peace Corps or in a fellowship, starting a job full time, or maybe starting um, a doctoral program, right? So we really, um, that's what my excitement in my job comes from is getting that call or email from students who are now alumni in their first jobs. Um, in terms of salary, of course, this depends on where you are geographically, what experience you come with, and then also what industry you're working in. But our students' national or average salaries are higher than the national average salary that has been surveyed among colleges and universities. Um, so we do feel very proud of the success that our alumni find. Um, and then just to touch on Abby's point that like the practicum, our students go all over the world for their, their first jobs and careers. Um, this could be in hospitals and nonprofits, local, state, and um, federal government opportunities, consultancies. So the, just like public health, the options are very broad and, and available for them. I'm sure it's very rewarding for you to get the phone call for job placement. <laughs> the best, yes. the best part. <laughs> Well, let's end up with any career advice for our viewers. Yeah, so my general advice is that thank you notes go a really long way, especially in the job search. Um, and for students, I encourage students to come see us early and come see us often um, and take advantage of us as a resource as well as all of the resources available to you as a Tulane student. And then I guess my biggest piece of advice um, for students is although you have that practicum requirement as part of your curriculum, don't limit your practical experiences to that one thing. Uh, so seek out volunteer opportunities, seek out on-campus research or teaching assistantships. Um, all of those experiences will help inform what it is that you really want to do within the industry and it will help your full-time job search later on. Um, and then Sue, before, before we close out, I also just really quickly wanted to mention that we are on social media. So if you want to follow us to hear about um, all of the things that we're doing, events and workshops on campus, how we serve students, you can follow us on Instagram at Tulane Career Studio or Facebook at SPH Careers and we will link that in the video as well. Very good, thank you for that advice. Well, Catherine and Abby, I want to say thank you so much. We truly value and appreciate all of your efforts, and you're a great asset to our school. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks you're for having us. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm Sue Ross, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thanks. See you soon.